I don't think Mark really wrapped his head around initially what I was asking him to do was with his $30,000 ski, but as you'll see, it all went well. What's up everybody, this is Mark Gomez. We're here at the refuge in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, where we filmed the opening sequence to Hot Water Movie, directed by my childhood icon, Larry Rippenkroger. Hi everybody, my name is Larry Rippenkroger, and uh, I want to give you a little background of where I came from. I was uh, a four-time world champion in uh, jet ski racing, watercraft racing. Started back in the heyday of the sport, back in the early 80s. In fact, I was the very first overall world champion. Went on and raced, oh boy, at least 10, 12, maybe even 15 years uh, on and off throughout my career. And um, during that time, uh, amazing things would happen on tour, funny things would happen on tour, and I kept saying to myself, that's just like a scene out of a movie. So I just logged these uh, stories and these tales of uh, mayhem in my head and always dreamed of somehow parlaying my titles into a career in the film industry. And uh, I tried and tried and tried and finally got a lucky break in 1994. I got a call from the stunt coordinator, Ari Rondell, called me to be a stuntman on the movie Waterworld. And it was a dream come true. Next thing you know, I'm in Hawaii on the most expensive movie ever filmed at that time. And uh, it was a dream gig, and that was my break into the film industry. I went on to have a great career as a stuntman, a stunt coordinator. I'm probably most well known for being Bruce Willis's stunt double for over 10 years. And um, all the while, though, in the back of my mind, I was dabbling on a script for a jet ski movie. And uh, I had an unfortunate accident on Die Hard 4 and was laid up for almost two years on and off. Uh, during that time, I really polished the script for Hot Water. And uh, fast forward to a few years later, we finally able to, were able to put it all together. And so I have, am transitioning now into a producer and director. And uh, Hot Water is the first film. It's a dream come to. It's been a long time coming. I've been thinking about this for over 20 years. And we finally pulled it off. And uh, I'm really happy with what we got in the can. And, uh, yeah, we got more to tell you about this whole opening stunt, which blows a lot of people's minds. My dad's car, he's gonna kill me. All right, so when we got started with this, um, first, you wanted me to throw my brand new ski out of the water. So I had one at the time, it wasn't the new one, but um, you'd given me a little bit of preparation for this, let's just say. <coughs> but not only do we have a 10 foot drop here, where there's like a no man's land with the pool <laughs> reservoir. Yeah. Then we've got 15 feet to then another 10 foot drop uh, on the other side. Yeah. So we had to kind of plan a general catching area. So how many boxes did that require? I, you know, I can't remember exact the, the count of the boxes. I remember it was over a thousand dollars worth of cardboard boxes. Um, and then we had an army of volunteers, our friends that came out and helped assemble this. It this was like two or three pallet loads. Yes, wasn't it? it was several pallet loads. Um, and yeah, we were dealing with all these different elements. And I know you went out and did some tests at the lake and mm -hmm. kind of got a consistent general idea of how general far idea, it was yeah. going to go. So we calculated the box catcher built on that, but you were dealing with so many things. First off, the pool's only four feet deep. Yep. And then we have a hard, you know, concrete infinity edge that you obviously don't want to hit Do with the hit. ski. Um, you're doing it inside of an inflatable T-Rex costume with limited visibility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your brand new ski. Yeah. What could yeah, go wrong? Factors. <laughs> and then um, it was really angle or interesting too, because in the angle of which they put the cutout car, which to touch on that, um, that wasn't actually my ski. You, we had worked out something with Rick, didn't you? Yes, Rick Roy was tremendous. He actually shipped us an empty hull. It was identical to your brand new ski, and this was very painful, but uh, we had Mark Dobson kind of calculate it, and I told him approximately where I wanted it cut, and he took a, a chainsaw to a brand new Richter hull. And, yep. uh, 
<laughs> modified it to look like it had pierced through the roof of this Camaro, which by the way was all the vintage cars were donated to us uh, for the day by a really generous woman here in town. And um, that I told, well, warned everybody, do not scratch this Camaro no matter what. Yeah, we couldn't, we, we couldn't. had to get the effect of, the, of it going through the car, but we couldn't leave Could, a single It's not mark a single on. scratch at all. And we were able to put, you acquired some kind of matching material for the roof of the car, which we put down first, and then the, the cut hull. That hole, Mark cut it at a an angle and everything when yeah. we set it on there, and it was kind of turned a it different was like direction. It was inverted yeah. as if the ski not only did a backflip but came in at like an, an awkward angle. And yeah, I remember seeing that, and I got super stressed out because <laughs> you know wanting to do the best job for you, but also mildly like kind of particular. That was a very particular angle that it would have needed to come into. Yeah. Hey everybody on the set of Hot Water this morning, check it out. Mark Gomez had a little accident. And ironically, uh, call it luck or skill, we'll, uh, we'll take it. But we'll take it. when you flip the ski out, it not only backflip, but it twisted in the air and it would, you know, it would line up perfectly with the way that the, the hull was set in the car to make it look like it had gone through. I mean, it was yeah. just amazing. I, it, that was, that was, uh, it was really intense in that moment because when I went to push, <clears throat> normally every time I practiced, I came in and both feet kind of loose in the back like I do a super flip and I would push the boat straight but I think on this go just at that last second I might have just pushed a little because of the angle the curvature of the pool mm. I pushed a little bit with my right foot a little extra and as it left my right hand throttle hand was the last to go and it just gave it that little bit of send <laughs> and I remember watching it I actually couldn't see it right. because the T-Rex head had because I naturally Flopped was down. trying yes. to deflate it for the shot. Yeah, um, I legitimately could not see it. <laughs> Elite, I heard the like the engine stop, and I splashed, and I came up, and I heard the crack. Wow, that's a different perspective. When you're <laughs> down here. I don't think I. I think I came down here once just to get an eyeball of how they're setting up the boxes but it still didn't make that much sense. Um, so again, we had to get as, as many boxes as just in case the ski went a little to the right or a little to the left. And not only that, it was a big change having the boxes. The ideal area was right there in front, but then what if I cleared it and went down here? We didn't, that's another 10, 20 feet of that thing coming and crashing. So we had to prepare for everything. Yes. we. Um and the other thing that was limiting us, we could only go so high with the boxes on that first level because they couldn't be seen while we were shooting up there. Right. Um, obviously, once we step down here, the, the catcher is much deeper. But when we also uh, gave it an angle, so they got the catching area got wider mm -hmm. just in case. And we used every box we had. And uh, ironically, though, we put some furniture pads in the prime landing zone so that it wouldn't scratch the ski or what have you and you it know ca it distributes the, the weight <laughs> yes well. exactly so, and I mean, box catcher too i mean a it's a budget thing but i mean this is like goes back this dates box catchers date back in stunts right it, you've been in the scene for quite a while yeah yeah it does pre uh airbags it was nothing but box catchers i mean guys have done you know, well over 100 foot high falls into cardboard boxes. And even mm. like semis and... Yes, actually on big Hollywood studio movies, a lot of times we've launched cars off ramps and landed them in, in cardboard boxes. And mm. no scratches, not right. dent, nothing. Yeah, it's amazing the energy that the boxes will absorb when they're constructed right. And Still, it's there's in the back of your mind, it's like what if the thing went in just directly nose first and just punched through and right, right to the bottom and you know, there's that in the back of your mind, but yeah, it went yeah. perfect. That there is no looking back when the scene was on. It was, I, I don't know, it was, again, my childhood coming from what everything you've done for me, it was just a, it was an absolute no brainer. It was just a call to action. You know, we've, we risk a lot more for, you know, all the contests and whatnot. So this was just a prime, that was just everything in that moment meant so much. And it had to, it just, everything kind of just worked out. It was great. It did, it all came together and it couldn't have been more perfect the way you, you stuck it exactly where our prime target was. and. Um, like I say, call it, we'll call it skill because it's Mark, but yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, but it was, it was really eerie because when it landed in that spot, um, I had just hit the water. I didn't really go under, it was only four feet deep, but I popped back out, but you're still rolling. And I remember scuttling up because you wanted me to scuttle up to the, to look over the edge and see what had happened because mm -hmm. I'm also stunt acting right. in this costume and the head's 
hung over my uh, my face. I can't see through the screen where the ski had even landed. So I'm just sitting there. It was really eerie because everyone, ah, they all got quiet. Yep. And it's really quiet. All I could hear is the shh, shh yeah. from the, from the, the, the waves pool, going the waves over the, the edge. Yes. Over, and you're just like, <clears throat> hold it, hold it, just hold that, hold, like you said something. And I just remember getting like, okay, wait, wait. And it was like a 10, it felt like a minute and a half <laughs> to five minutes. Yeah. But it was maybe just a 10 second cadence. And, like, and cut and everybody lifted and got and yes. went nuts yep, and it, yeah. I pulled the, the head over I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> we did it <laughs> car he's gonna kill me i'm gonna kill him every week it's something new with him a new video for his internet followers Woo! and a new pain in my ass show an interest in his jet skiing he has been talking about wanting to be a pro jet skier for years are you gonna be a pro at anything when you're a quitter i actually might have a solution so i could get the greatest jet skier of all time jared harper to come out of retirement coach your son well, there's always a catch with you so come on what is it oh what what we'll catch there's no catch Look at this guy, he's like a Picasso out there. Yeah, Picasso, all right. That thing is a rocket. Come on, Billy, stay low. If you're in the air, you're not going forward. Cut, Billy, cut! Konnichiwa, Jordan Deshu. Japanese? It's worth a shot, he sure as hell didn't understand English. Should take it easy out there. Keep lapping all the girls like that, they're not gonna wanna race with you. That's okay, I wanna race against men anyway. Kelly, team meeting. He is such a jerk. Do you always boss you around like that? Ever since you went out with him. Sounds like you have a thing for champions. A part of me wants to be with you, but I need to stay focused on racing. I'm setting him up. Back off, Billy. They're fighting in the middle of the race course. Look, Dad, I'm pretty much in a no-win situation here. I cried your tears. I've had the ocean. Now it's time to sweat. How are we going to compete against Richard when he's running on 20 more horsepower? But once it gets rough out there, it's all rider. You can outride him. Holy Toledo! The crowd is going crazy! It's not over, Billy. It's not over. I'm going to go take a hot shower, which is like a normal shower, but with me in it. I got nothing. Well, that was a lot of fun, Larry. I really appreciate you coming out, um, giving us the tour again, and it was just really fun to reminisce on it all. Of course, it meant the world to me to be able to uh, help you out with this film and be a part of it all. Um, why don't you tell people how uh, they can watch this right now? Sure, I mean, I, I truly appreciate your help with this. Uh, you can see Hot Water now on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, iTunes, Vudu, Google Play, YouTube, and Vimeo On Demand. And uh, if you're interested in a DVD or Blu-ray, go to hotwatermovie.com. You can order them there and see a lot of the behind the scenes pictures and such from the production. And by the way, speaking of DVDs, I want to present no you way. with a hot water DVD. There we go. <laughs> you can get it, order it straight. It comes directly from Larry the Ripper, Rippin' Kroger guys. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be rolling out some more content like this. And of course, go watch Hot Water Movie visit hotwater.movie.com. Thanks, guys.